I'll go first. Someone blindfold me. Of course, Trapper has a blindfold ready to go. It's as if he had it. He had it in his hands before you even spoke. Ugh, and did he just wink? And did he just bite your lip? Hi friends, it's me, Killshot Kitty, back again with another video. Today we're going on with Hooked on You. And today we are romancing the Wraith. I could not pick between whether I wanted Trapper as last or Wraith as last. I went with Wraith. Uh, so we'll do Trapper last. These were romances that I wasn't really planning on doing, but since I'm gonna try to 100% the entire game here on YouTube, I'm gonna do it anyway. So today we start with day one on Wraith. If you do wanna watch any of the other playthroughs I've done of Hooked on You for Spirit and for Huntress, I do have a playlist right here. Before we get started though, I'd like to ask if you can please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button and then hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified of any future videos. All right, friends, let's romance Wraith, I guess. Oh, guy. <coughs> you wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water, stinging the inside of your throat as if you nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your, your own name. Uh, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. What you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. <coughs> wow, really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute or can I go on? <sighs> because I can, I can give you a minute. We've got plenty of time, and this time really. An eternity, if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Ava, may I continue? Please go on. Okay then, as I was... <coughs> as I was saying! You looked out at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque dis discovery. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand, and all you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and others. It. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Uh, close your eyes. You close your eyes. This must be a nightmare, right? This is not happening. This is not happening. The mantra centers you and you're briefly able to find peace. The lapping waves go silent and for the first time in your entire life, it feels like you're in control. When you open your eyes, you're in the exact same place, except now that disgusting corpse face is, is smiling at you. Even the dead have a wondrous time on our island. I promise you will too. Don't worry, you're gonna do just fine. We wouldn't want anyone else. Well, that was sure weird, that voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. A little help, please. You turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. My two boos. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed. Let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush to your mind at once that you are par completely paralyzed. Hello? There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. What do you do? So we'll also kind of play this like a guide like we did uh, with Huntress as well. Uh, Spirit, we did have a guide for the last video, um, but what we're gonna do is pick everything that is required to get the good ending for Wraith first. And then we're gonna try to go for the bad ending as well. Usually the bad ending, it's not too much different. Usually for bad endings, you just need to pick basically the exact same stuff all the way through up until the end. So this is a guide for both, okay? All right. So we have to, for Wraith, kick it back. 
You swing your foot and awkwardly strike the volleyball, sending it bouncing across the stand towards Huntress. It doesn't make it all the way. Everyone stares at you, silently observing your unsportsmanlike shame. They, that, they must be wondering, have you ever seen a volleyball before? That, there's, that's surely what I'm wondering right now. It's not a soccer ball. What a dork. You feel so awkward that you can barely see straight, but through the haze of your embarrassment, you catch Wraith looking at you from the corner of your eye. Huntress jogs the rest of the way to grab the volleyball, and they all turn back and head back to the court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion in onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Ava. You were made for this. Well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the, the game just by showing up, nitwit. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best just to go with what Trapper says when he says it. That, that's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? <sighs> that was Wraith. That sign means he was done with the game, too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why this slack John moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? You know you can't. At least not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey Ava, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. This is a timed quiz and it will be very important later. Very important. Or not important anyway whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? For Wraith, it actually looks like it does not matter. I'm pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd, another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself, like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Invisibility. Same, although sometimes I think I already am. What was your best subject in school? Math? It's the only thing that makes sense when you think about it. What's your favorite animal? Uh, mustelid? Be honest, you have no idea what a mustelid is and you're just hoping it's some secret answer that results in a hilarious Easter egg, right? Because there is no Easter egg. It's just another word for ferrets and stuff like that. What's your favorite color? Blood red. Red. Some call it the color of love, but love is just another word for pain. What's your dream job? Astronaut. I'd be pretty amazing to be... It'd be pretty amazing to be an astronaut, I think. It's hard to imagine being farther away from anyone that floating than floating in space. The cold, inky vastness of nothing forever. Best flavor of ice cream. Van I'll try vanilla. I don't think I've picked vanilla. Vanilla? My favorite flavor is pain. Same. Same here. <sighs> Mine is vanilla swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I ever conceived myself, but enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second, this reminds me, I am right, always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go much too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive, pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator. You rascal, kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even of four faceless voices. Tell me, what the best flavor of ice cream? Mint chip. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants to, you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like anyone else. I like nice people and loathe big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's just not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering, and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society she hates it so much. 
Oh no, wait, I'm remembering Spirit's story now and that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let those these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog buddy. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate that. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Let's move on, otherwise they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I finally agree with the meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's a massive boat dock nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him, he just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth. The way it's flaunted needlessly and the cruelty it engenders. How about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming, simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I, I'm tired and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? So for Wraith, we got to choose the beach. I'd be down for a dip in the pool or the pool. Oh, the pool? You, you actually want to go to the pool? I, uh, well, I mean, sure, why not? I've got good ideas. What's wrong with my ideas? The pool is great. Everyone knows that. All around the world, if people agree on one thing, it's that pools are great. Look, we've got a whole ocean right here, and they still put in a pool because pools are just, you know, great. It's a real special treat. And you thought it was bad when you stayed quiet. Hold on. For just one moment. This is Dwight Coletta, our activities coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only one help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderous Island. Cute dramatic musical flourish. Oops. Ahem. Survive the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall... They're here to for... Refer to them as survivors with a capital S. Wait, can I go back? No. Okay. These two have worked here a long time. So very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry. Anyway... I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible and don't just run off to various activities and supervise. You don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you can do is help us get off this island. Wait! Yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Hey, narrator? Yes, something I can help you with? Those two, Claudette and Dwight. Did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape them? Ha, huh? no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was trying asking for help to get off this island though. Oh, right. Yes, uh, that's true, he was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway, a couple miles south of here. Has much fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity on this island. Your decisions matter mostly. Well, I agree with them. Not like that other island. So what it'll be? Pool. Wraith moves ahead to the pool at a pace that should, could almost be considered jaunty if a creature so lanky they appeared to made, be made entirely of elbows and ankles could jaunt um what's going on with Wraith's, Wraith's face is that a smile is that that what a smile looks like when he does it what could I say I, being enveloped by water is comforting it's quiet it's ominous and you know Wraith looks back over each shoulder to make sure no one beside you is within earshot the fire can't get me super normal stuff here as usual oh great it's called dead and Dwight what do these two want since everyone's at the pool we figured we'd bring out some of our most popular pool accessories. Ava, which which of these is particularly interesting to you? So for Wraith, it's Googles and Snorkel. I said Googles. Goggles. Goggles. 
I'm sure Wraith would love Google if he had access to it right now, but... Can I get some of those goggles? Using goggles and a snorkel lets me escape from it all and de completely immerse myself in the wet embrace of the water. Gazing to the bottom, wishing I could be there forever. Yikes, wishing you'd pick that lounger? Well, too late, you dive in and take a plunge. The world melts away as you join Wraith underwater in the wet embrace of whatever it was he said. He brushes up against you and you realize he hasn't taken off his shirt. Hmm, should you do it for him? So for this one, it's hands off. Now's not the time to get handsy. You decide against it. Yeah, he probably has his reasons. For a waking nightmare, you can almost believe that you're starting to relax a bit and forget about how much you can't remember. It's as if the sun's very rays have a calming effect on you and your your body tranquilized by the soft light from overhead, coupled with the cool breeze rolling in from the sea. And you're not alone. I feel recharged by the gentle warmth of the ocean's caress. It was a little too warm. That might be, have been my fault. Also, this is a pool, not the ocean. Okay, everyone, just let him finish. Thanks, Ava. I know this probably doesn't seem like me, but would anyone want to play a game of Marco Polo? Yes, I love games. I'll go first. Someone blindfold me. Of course, Trapper has a blindfold ready to go. It's as if he had his, he had it in his hands before you even spoke. Ugh, and did he just wink? And did he just bite your lip? What? Did you just bite your lip? Me? Did I just bite my lip? I did it. Good thing you're getting reined in because, because it sure seemed like you were about to act up. What? I did it! I'm going for Wraith right now, not Trapper! Alright, anyway, mini game. They make me seem like a thirsty monster. Alright, let's do the mini game. Like, ready to play or would you like to repeat that? Ready. Perfect! Oops. Perfect! Oops. Not bad. Oh no. Not bad. <gasps> you missed completely. That was pretty good, Ava. No, it wasn't. Don't lie. Just ignore him. You've been thrown into a very weird situation and uh, you held your own. I respect that. That was a good game. I say we celebrate by throwing this waiter whose name I forgot into the pool. So for this one, we have to pick, have some fun. Hilarious, bullying truly is the gift that keeps on giving. You grab Dwight's legs and help Trapper give him the heave-ho. You know what? Sorry, I can't pretend to support you on this one. Only Trapper is this sadistic. I know it's all in good fun or whatever, but not on my murderous island. Yeah, that's right. This place really is called murderous island. But that doesn't mean we're cool with bullying. You're on thin ice, friend. I'm no expert, even though as an omnipotent narrator, I probably should be. But I think that means it's time for the next activity. Seems like the next activity is mealtime. How quaint. You were expecting what? Catch of the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And oh, great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected, sir. I'm sorry. I, even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shtick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good, Ava. Real good. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't lift at the, they can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side. The rest of them will sit opposite you. Hunters and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone's seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't 
and actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with the perfect number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which you, you know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you to be judging now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts. And you need to murder something to eat its meat. So that's like technically true. Technically true is the best guy true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Ava, you thinking what I'm thinking? It's going to be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps? I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree buttoned down prints, you know. When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for a change, because I am with my broad axe. It's a perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. That's powerful and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked, no blood. Ugh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough, grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Ops. The hell it is! Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop, please. I hate when we fight or talk or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azeroth. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to the second death. Hey, Ava, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to call carve up Felix. I mean dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued once over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. It doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value and maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up uh, dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Time for minigame. Ready. Got three perfects in a row. Four perfects in a row. Five perfects in a row. Shit, flawless. That was possibly the sexiest thing I've ever seen that didn't involve a dismemberment. Maybe we should skip dinner. Settle down. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And remember, Ava, don't show all your cards just yet. You don't want them to expect anything. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds especially coming from the mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who remember seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their mask. This is only 99% as disgusting as it would have been if they did just tried to mash stuff through there. Uh, Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Ava. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut in my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation of why. What do you want to tell them? Uh, so for Wraith, we need to pick... I'm sorry. Actually, it's not the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be grossed out by dinner, so I have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry if that makes things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try to relax and not worry about e what everyone thinks. It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you, right? Guys, is anyone listening to me? Typically, a group of... Uh, typically a group that includes one, if not more cannibals, staring at you with ju meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now you're barely able to keep your head up, let alone get scared and run away. 
I'm a narrator, not a physician. So please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh, hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you. Not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague? Mysterious? I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I like, some of them I do not. It's in your best interest to make more choices that I like. For the choice might be yours to make, but they're mine to reward. Okay. You wake up to find Wraith holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cold water into your mouth. Now that you're finally alone, Wraith looks at you eagerly. You were grossed out, were you? Even when you eat, you know you look like a beautiful angel. You were just pretending to be awkward because it's lonely being so perfect. Wraith's kind of sweet. All we have in this life are those fleeting connections with other living things. Something to remind us we're not alone. Ugh. Could you possibly be as shy and nervous as someone like me? Uh. This one's no. When he asked if you could be as shy and nervous. I made it up. Oh, well, um, thanks for being honest with me. Um, how do I say this? It's just honesty is important to me. I've been burned too many times. Something about the word burn makes Wraith look away, away far away. Eyes bring me with tears and yet at the same time dead. Oops. Wraith looks back at you with those sad eyes, wanting so badly to believe you. He looks down at the ground. I have something very important to tell you. It's about something very special to me. It's not something I tell everyone, but you know how important honesty is to me. I can't expect that from you if I'm not honest in return. <sighs> oh great, I bet he's got crabs. <laughs> it's about my special bill. What? <laughs> <laughs> it belonged to my father. It, it, he gave it to me before he, um, before he and my mother, well, they had to go away. If I was ever in danger, I was supposed to ring this bell. It, it didn't really work, but it's all I have of my family with me. Wow, Wraith, thank you for telling me. Here, hold it. Whoa, Wraith just gave you his bell? Sound the alarms. What are you going to do with this thing? Uh, hold the bell delicately is the right answer. You caress the bell, burning, running your fingers over its rusty. Is that dried blood? Why are you touching this thing? Thank you for sharing this important part of yourself. You hand the bell back. Wraith is looking out wistfully at the ocean. The ocean's beautiful. It's not really. None of this is. Wraith looks at you more intensely than ever. I don't know if you're ready to hear the truth. Just as the things are really, uh, just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on the strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was. No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go. Okay. Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on a time for evening activities. And we only have time for one person to share this special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh, great. We have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. 
This is sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anyone anything ever? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick and I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and Muss are back on. You two know I love to hack slash and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all, all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even named, knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. But we still got to get started on story time, so... Ava, how do you think, uh, how, Ava, how, who do you think should go? Ah, uh, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Uh, for this way, we gotta pick Wraith. I choose you, Wraith. Whoa, whoa, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. You literally carry around a skull and a spine as your little prop. As the other killers laugh, Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into his hollow, dark eye sockets. If you're looking for something Shakespearean in this story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of staring at the soul of death and never returning. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkyard. The man was quiet, kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with clients, the young man operated the crusher, turning old cars into cubes of twisted metal. One day, right before crushing a car, he noticed something. Blood. Drip, drip, dripping from the trunk. He opened it and found a frightened stranger bound and gagged. The young man reeled. Was he about to accidentally murder the stranger? How, how could this have happened? He freed the stranger who ran off into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. Before a shaken employee could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss took out a knife and swiftly slit the stranger's throat. The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. W what do you do? He asked the boss. I did your job for you. What do you mean? That's not my job. My job is to crush the cars. The boss let out a miserable scoff, his face contorting in evil disdain for the pathetic wretch in front of him. Why do you think we're crushing these cars to save space? Who do you think my clients are? Uh, I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what's happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands are clean. My clients give me money. I take care of their problems, eliminate their witnesses, tie up their loose ends, or actually you do. No, the man whispered as the boss tur tur uh No, the man whis whimpered as the boss towered over him. Yes, you're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. The young man's body shook with soft spasms as he started the young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying it was when the boss started laughing with that when it happened something in the young man changed he stood up now taller than the boss a faint glimmer of fear overtook the snarl on the older man's face the young man's face was empty empty as he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him to the car in the crusher empty as he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside empty as he slammed the trunk down on him and his stupid fat head sticking out begging for mercy Empty as he started the machine, staring at the boss in his sniveling, crying wet face. Empty as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in, farther piercing the skin. Empty as he squeezed and pulled. Empty as he heard bones popping and snapping. But then the boss's head, still attached to his spine, pulled cleanly out of its disgusting stack of, sack of a body. He smiled. Is that where he got his, his rod? Ray stares back into the eye sockets of his skull. It doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. An awkward silence falls upon the room until... Uh, so the answer for this one is we have to ask about the story. The poor young man, I wonder what happened to him. Oh, yeah, uh, we never know. Well, whatever, wherever he is, I hope he's okay. I can't tell, but I think Wraith just smiled. Sorry, it's just weird to see him do it. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves you and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for...
for all of seven seconds because Trickster, Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey, baby, you look alone. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island, the only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you're, aren't, you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Wraith approaches you. Hey, I'm probably just not making a great impression because uh, I guess that's not really my thing. I just know that if you got to know me, then I mean, look, the others aren't around. I really hate the fire pit. I just kind of hate fire in general. Maybe we could go back to the pool and like, I don't know, whatever, you know. A dip in the pool with the wraith? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you should have followed him and offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. Um, hey, do you, do you remember my story? You mean the one you just told like a minute ago? Yeah. Um, yes. Did you? I mean, like, what did you think of um the young man in the story? Do you think he's weird? Uh, so the answer is I would forgive him. I would forgive him. What happened to him would make anyone snap. And who knows what happened in this past to lead him to that point. He was just trying to be good. Yes, that's all he wanted was to be good. Well, that makes sense. Um, did the young man remind you of anyone? Uh, so this one you have to say yes. Yes. It's you. It's clearly you. What? No, it's I'm. You're carrying around the guy's skull and spine with you right now. Uh. Wraith looks at Azeroth's skull, then out into the middle dis mis distance. A long silence ensues. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. Is it cold in this water now, or is it just me? I feel like my toes are turning into ice cubes. Wraith seizes up and squeezes his eyes shut. Please, I can't be around any cube talk. Not since, um, I heard that story from somebody else a long time ago. The story you just told us two minutes ago? Exactly, that one wasn't about me. Usually we'd be nervous that we were around, about to make things awkward when we barge in, but obviously we couldn't hold a candle to whatever was happening here tonight. Either way, it's time for bed. For you, but not for us. After you go to sleep, that's when we party. After spending all day cooped up in these tight little safari-themed resort uniforms, you just know those two raged late into the night. But you're not here to party with them. You've got your own repressed relationships to tend to. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Ray's story about the young man who found out he was part of a sinister plot. What you don't know, what uh, <clears throat> what don't you know about your current situation? Is it something that will terrify you? Something that will make you snap? What if you look into the eyes of evil and what if you like it? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that live by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps the music will help you at ease? Help put you at ease. Wow, I can't read. Just try to keep the volume at a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Okay, mini game. rock version of this main team. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon to your side to lay by the fire? Wraith, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. I can't really sleep. Oh, that happens to me a lot. Um, okay, don't laugh. Promise? I promise. Um, I guess my secret to falling asleep is listening to the sounds of bells or chimes. Think of it as white noise to drown out anything you might be hearing that's keeping you up. Like what, Wraith? Like those distant screams we can all hear coming from beyond the mountain? If that's, um, a bit morbid, I guess you could hold on to this chess piece of mine. Why do you have a... 
A chess piece? 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 It's a knight. They're brave like I wish I were. And the horsey is cute. How cute. You finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleep feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now, you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. Look, I'm not saying that my feelings are hurt because you chose to swim in some pathetic little teacup when you could have swam in the vastness of an entire, uh, me, I guess. I'm just saying that you've made a foolish decision and I won't forget it. My feelings are hurt. I just lost some respect for you. That's all. You wake suddenly to see something looming, someone looming over you. Huntress is rifling through your pockets. Oh, you're awake. I wasn't stealing from you, merely trying to get to know you better by seeing what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with the wraith right before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but well, yes, I am saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't already have tied up, so I was making sure they didn't do anything fishy. And I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know. While I've got you, you should really consider spending some t more time with me. I'm not scary. You're not? Not at all. I'm just a lost girl on Big Island. I've been watching you since we got here, you know. Not in a creepy way. Huntress pauses for a long moment. All right, in a charmingly creepy way. I've noticed how fun loving you seem. If you spend some time with me tomorrow, maybe I'll take you to the special place I found. It's all mine. None of the other killers have been able to find me there. It's quiet and isolated. Maybe I'll even show you how to make beak stroganoff. That all sounds very enticing. I'll let you go back to bed. It's been a long day. Shh. Huntress places a gigantic hand on her forehead and your eyes flutter closed. Finally alone for real this time. Maybe you drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Oh God. Wait a second, where are we? This isn't, oh geez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to the camera. Can you blame me for not getting along well with others? I mean, I haven't had a real conversation with anyone since I was a child. I ha I take the fact that I haven't slaughtered the newcomer for their meat yet as a win. They look pretty tasty though, so who knows what'll happen tomorrow. Hey Dwight, do we have tarragon on this island? This is weird. I don't care enough to kill this person, but if anyone else wants to, I don't care enough to stop them. Might have to just kill Dwight to feel anything again. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really um invest in something that might hurt me, so I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes, or maybe they'll realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that's probably what'll happen. I I gotta learn to go easier on myself. How could I? Who could love me if I can't love myself? You know, I think I learned a lot about myself today. I always thought I was doomed to be alone for eternity, only my creeping desire for revenge to keep me company. Now I know it. All right. Okay. Day one is complete, and therefore, so is this playthrough for now. All right, friends, and that's it for today's video. Um, Wraith romance seems kind of cute so far. I feel kind of bad that he's so shy and like so hard on himself, but we'll see how he, he how he progresses. Like maybe he changes his heart a little bit as we go on. Seems like it's gonna be a cute romance though, so so we'll see. I guess while I have you here, let's uh, ask a question. Leave a comment below. And let me know who's your favorite killer in Dead by Daylight if you play it. Doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't even have to be uh, just the ones that are in, in Hooked on You, just any Dead by Daylight character. Mine personally is... I don't really play killer. I mostly only play survivor, so all of them suck to me <laughs> to play against. But I guess like my favorite ones would be uh, Spirit or the Pig from Saw or I actually really like um Legion as well they're pretty cool those are mine all right friends thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>